I'm so glad I can edit these videos. If this were a live stream, I'd be like, how are you still doing a thing? I can't even imagine a chaos that a live stream would be. Oh my goodness. Where we last left everything. With a list. Well, it's been many days later. Lots of hours printing later as well. And, uh, yeah. Let's clear this off and I'll show you where we're at. So the 3D model I used is on Thingiverse. The guy did a really good job of uh, modeling it. Did an okay job of cutting it. Um, I brought it into my stuff and I, I kind of moved things together. Uh, I guess that's staying for now. I, I didn't like... He had this in like three different pieces or two... I, I, I put it all together as one. I had a heck of a time printing this stupid thing. So, printing the, the, the bottom, this, this part, without the thruster base, um, I put everything together because I, I wanted to print it as one, but I printed it this way. And uh, right here, I ran out of filament. So my, my uh, printer has a filament sensor. It stopped. Um, when I, I fed it back in, heading out to work so I, I fed it in I got everything it started doing its thing and I walked out um, I forgot that my printer retracts a little bit every now and again so this was nothing this one this one I, this one was coming out fantastic I got a clog that happened Matter of fact that's the rest of the clog same thing this is just infill and that just didn't come out right but there's a lot of extra that happen when you 3D print. You gotta be prepared for that. Um, I almost didn't have enough time to get this done today. But here we are. So I've got a bunch of pieces here. I wanna set this up so I can remember what I'm doing before I start doing it. Because certain sides go to certain sides. There and there. Because every almost everything is symmetrical except these two top holes, right? And these thrusters. So I just have to remember which side goes where. Everything fits together fantastic, except for this. This was super snug and I don't think I'm getting it back off. So I think I'm just gonna run with it as it is. The detail is fantastic. Like I said, the guy who modeled it did a great job. Probably put a link in the, the, the doobly for the uh, Thingiverse file. But step one is going to be to glue all the body together. Should probably grab some clamps. Be right back. I said tag with and just grabbed a bunch of them. I also picked up, you know, let me get comfortable. I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see what we're doing. I also picked up a bunch of glue. I'm going with Gorilla, Gorilla this time. Just because first thing I'm going to do is glue the rocket base onto the top here. You know what? It said protect work area from glue, and that's a really good idea. I meant to put this down before I set everything out. So here we are. I'm going to stop and move everything, put down a silicone mat so whatever super glue happens to spill doesn't stick, and uh, we'll pick it back up in a minute. Just because I'm in a rush. Doesn't mean I can do it the wrong way. There we go. That's a bit better. Put a little bit here. So this piece is super snug, by the way. Um, which is why I am not taking it off first. But the super glue is thin enough, it should seep in. All right. Top and the bottom. Getting glued together. I'm just using super glue. I'm not using anything weird. I'm not, it's just, it's just glue, right? doesn't matter what kind it is. Brands are all pretty much the same at this point. The important part is making sure everything lines up.
because things are a little off. They shift a little bit. The back is way less important than the front, of course. Just let it do its thing. Um, I'll probably glue this on too. Nice thing about 3D prints is they tend to have a little bit of a texture to them. So it, I don't really need to sand it to get it to do its thing. All right. I'm, I'm going to walk away and let it dry. I can mess with this for days. I'm just going to get a, just going to walk away. Just walk away and let it do its thing. Just had plenty of time to uh, cure. We're going to glue the sides on. Now this time I'm leaving the two tanks off because I want to be able to, to bondo in here first and then we're going to put everything together. So for now, we're just gluing the, the thruster housing all together like so. So here's the problem with um, gluing multiple pieces together. This piece has shifted a little and this piece has shifted a little and now I have to use very creative clamping to make sure everything is pressed in. Uh, that's why I got the gel stuff too. Because this tends to fill in gaps. So now, we tentatively let it do what it's going to do. We'll see where we're at with the other side. Things at that time to glue. Let's see where we're at. I'm expecting there to be gaps. That's completely, completely expected, right? That's why we use body filler. But I'm trying to keep as few as possible. This one's going to have some. I can feel it already. So again, just like the other side, we're going to glue, clamp everything together, and walk away. Let it do its thing. It's important to let glue dry. Luckily, this model has a couple of uh, alignment holes that I can use to line everything up. Just like the other side, I'm going to put a clamp on it, tighten everything down, and give it a while to do its thing. Luckily, going side to side like this, way easier, because I have two even um, sides to just clamp onto. And I'm using rubberized spring clamps because um, the glue doesn't stick very well to it. So since I've got everything in place, um, these accessory brackets, the little dental moldings. I'm going to glue those on real quick because those don't affect anything. I'm going to let these dry overnight and then in the morning I'm going to come back and cover everything with body filler. Everything is glued together, right? And I'm super happy with it. I don't think it needs Bondo, um, but it does have a lot of gaps. Most 3D prints don't fit very well and you're going to get gaps. So I'm going to fill those with resin. I have Smoothcast 300, same, uh, same resin I normally use, and I'm going to tape off a bunch of these seams. I absolutely expect this thing to leak. There is 0% chance it's not going to. So as long as I prepare for it and act as if it's an eventuality, I'll have a much better time just across the board. I plan on doing this a couple of times, so it doesn't have to be all done at once. I overdo things, right? It's my nature. I look at a project and go, ooh, but what if this? What if What if real is normally what I do, right? Um, I always go, well, well, yeah, but what if, what if, what if I made it like, and it was a fiberglass backpack that could, it's fine. It doesn't need to be a fiberglass backpack. I don't need to put all kinds of stuff all over everything, right? It doesn't have to legitimately be able to stop a bullet. I want it to, because, like I said, I overdo things. It doesn't need to. 3D prints are fine. There's nothing wrong with 3D prints on costumes. There's nothing wrong with foam on costumes, because in the end, they're costumes. A little bitty Dixie Cups. They're cute. And I'll mix in another one. I'm only doing small, small um, amounts. I don't like mixing small amounts normally because there's uh, less room for error. I'm doing it on my mat, 
because my mat will uh, peel. I'll be able to peel the resin off of my mat, which is why I'm using it instead of covering it in something or doing something else. So this is just to reinforce the seams a little bit. All right, we're gonna leave it for about 10, 15 minutes. Let it do its thing. This doesn't really need it. Um, I just want to make sure that everything is um, is just it's as secure as it can be. So this side has a couple of gaps. I want to try and close those off as much as possible. So we'll give it 20 minutes. It's only a little leak right there. That's not bad. Neat. That went way better than expected. We still have kind of a gap on this side, so I'm going to do it again. Um, I may tape where the two main plates join. There's kind of a gap, but I think I'm going to hit that with glue. Um, I don't think I need to fully epoxy it, um, but this side still needs a little more. Let me go grab some, I'll get some gloves here. These are textured gloves, but yeah, what the heck. All right, same thing as before. Pour a little resin, dump it over the thing, figure out what we're doing with it. I would normally use uh, glazing putty to go over the whole thing. Let me see how a uh, resin works this time, just for fun, right? The level I'm doing all of this really isn't necessary. It never is, right? I was going to fiberglass it anyway, so it would just be coating it in resin. Let's uh, see if I can use it to close in any of these layer lines. It'd be kind of interesting. like finger painting. All right, after this we're going to peel all the tape and uh, start glazing putty. I'm going to basically cover the whole thing in glazing putty and that should uh, smooth everything out. All right, now we leave it for about 20 minutes. I mean, stop touching it. Jeez Louise. Guy never listens. This is turning out way better than I'd hoped. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to even out most of the edges with uh, glazing putty here. Mainly because it bothers Ted and it makes me laugh. Haha. <laughs> no, um. Light coat of glazing putty does even everything out. Nothing's had time to fully cure, so I can flake most of this off. Any any weird drips, but I'm super happy with it. Again, I'm gonna coat the entire thing in uh, Bondo glazing putty. It doesn't have to be a Bondo brand. Any kind of glazing putty works. That's just this is just what I have, so it's what I'm using. And I'm going super super light, super thin. This is just filling in layer lines. And my printer's dialed in okay enough that there aren't many layer lines. It's just evening everything out. And if I'm completely honest, the paint job's going to cover up most of my sins anyway. But I'm I just, just pushing in, right? I want to have as little um, glazing putty left on the print as possible. This will also show me where I need to do more work sanding and evening. Luckily I have one right here I can use for a comparison. A lot of people tend to skip this step. I find it crucial. 
and making sure everything just looks right. Um, a lot of people jump straight to uh, sandable primer. If I do this right, there should be almost no sanding. The reason I'm doing this with the tanks off is I can't get inside a couple of these areas with the tank on. I probably shouldn't have done it with this on, but um, the, the pieces are together, so it's kind of hard to, to not. Glazing putty dries super quick. So, uh, well, not super quick. It dries quicker than, than some things, longer than others. Um, glazing putty does dry relatively quickly. By the time I'm done with one side, the other side's going to be 100% ready to go again if I need more than one. But like I said, my printer's doing a fantastic job. The new one, the, the Tronxy, I'm unbelievably happy with that printer every time I do something. I am primarily focusing on the seams. That's a... Uh, that's where I feel I'm going to have the most issues, the largest gaps. And again, since I'm going for 501st approval, I have to uh, do a really good job. Not just a good job. So because I had weird printing issues, I have super large gaps on this side that I'm just kind of filling in right now. I'm going to do more touch-up once I put all the tanks back, or once I put the tanks in. But until then, I do want to give myself a head start. So these textured gloves, absolutely not doing me any favors at this point. I should go switch them to just standard smoother gloves. These are the ones I have, so I'm using them for now. And the other ones are all the way over there in my 3D printing room. This first time around, I'll probably use almost an entire tube. But from that point on, I should use very, very little. This is the part where I want to make a mold, right? And I'm like, ooh, I could make upwards of two Boba Fett backpacks that way. I wouldn't make more than that. But luckily, this is not my design. And I do not make molds that are not my design. That actually saved me a lot of a, should I? Well, no, it's not mine. Because if I'd fully modeled the whole thing, there's a 0% chance I wouldn't be making a mold right now. I know it's almost a shame to cover up this gorgeous candy. Look at this thing. Looks like a forbidden jelly rancher. gonna take me a while we're gonna jump to the first uh, sanding so since this whole thing is coated I'm gonna leave it probably for about 10-15 minutes let it just do its thing um, I'm also gonna coat all of these my, my, my tanks and put them in so we're gonna jump to that point right about now I know I said we pick it up at sanding but look at this the first time we've actually been able to see see it. Check that thing out. There we go. I am so happy with that. I mean, we've got a couple of seams here I'm going to have to sand down a little bit. Um, and this, I'm going to tape this off and fill this little area with resin. Um, but, oh, I'm not worried about the back, by the way. But, oh my goodness. I am so happy with how that looks. That is fantastic. All right. Now I'm going to let it cure for a little bit. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Set a couple of minutes to cure. I'm going to do a light sanding and then another coat, right? The longer you let this stuff, longer you let this set up, uh, the stronger it's going to be. So um, this is going to sand real quick. The light sanding shows me all of my low spots. All right, put another coat on. We'll see in a couple of minutes. There's still a lot of sanding to go. But I believe we've hit a point where it is time to put these in. Um, 
I am worried about the glue setting before I have a chance to put everything in place. So I'm only going to glue the very bottoms of them. So I'm just going to put a, a bead. They fit pretty snugly. So I'm not terribly worried about a thumb popping out. Now they're still yellow expo exposed, which is kind of what I wanted. I want to make sure there's good contact for the glue. All right. Then we're going to do the same thing with the thrusters as soon as I figure out which one goes where. Because I moved everything around. Guess right. And on this, I'm just going to glue the bottom. Next step is to a uh, glazing and spot putty the existing places. Should only take me a couple minutes. I'll be right back. I wanted to get to priming today. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get there. Um, there's just so much more sanding to do on this. I've already done like four hours worth of sanding, but that's where we're at. Look at this thing. That's amazing. Oh. Give you a compare and contrast, right? This one's a little taller, just a little bigger, like maybe 5%. I think it's too big. Um, this one seems right to me. From what I've been able to scale, this is accurate. Um, but when you compare the two of them, it's just night and day. I mean, look, the dental molding, right? All the, the, the edges are sharp and crisp. Oh my goodness, am I so happy with this one. But it's where I'm calling it today. Um, I've done nothing to the back. I'm probably going to do nothing to the back. I may smooth it off a little bit, paint it black, and be done. I want to be able to ha access... Because I need to be able to, uh, I want the, the rocket and thrusters removable for transport. Um, but, oh my goodness. I probably got another 40 hours worth of sanding. I'm going to sand, put more uh, glazing putty where needed. Sand, put more putty. It's probably going to take me the rest of the week. Um, but, we're going to prime it next time. And then... Uh, Maybe do the thrusters in the rocket. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. But I'm super happy with this. And if you're interested in watching the rest of this, you know, then like and subscribe. Maybe watch a couple other videos. Whatever, you know. Enjoy. I hope I see you next time.